The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name is Rick Naples. I thought on this show we talk about something a little bit different, and that is incentives. What are incentives, especially when it has to do with real estate? Now, the dictionary defines an incentive of something that causes or incites motive, such as a motive to do something. Let's sit back and watch a presentation, and I'll be back to talk about three of the types of incentives when it comes to real estate. estate show about a number of different things concerning the real estate transaction and I've always referred on past shows and talked a little bit about how you pick a realtor or how you pick an agency to do business with when you're looking to sell a home or looking to buy a home and one of the things that's out there that we see a lot of are what are called incentives now an incentive in real estate as I said, is something that a seller or a realtor might do to get someone to make an offer or do business with them. The first incentive I want to talk about are seller incentives. When you have a real estate market that gets very competitive as a season like going into the spring and the summer season and even into the fall, where a lot of homes come on the market, there's a lot of things to choose from. Buyers are not only looking at location and price and the amenities of the home, but they're also looking to see if there are any perks that a seller might offer uh, if the buyer chooses to purchase that home. Now, seller incentives can be a number of different things. The most common one is a monetary incentive. In other words, the seller will offer the buyer, if they make an offer that's acceptable on their home, some kind of monetary reward. Now this could be things like the seller agrees to pay the closing costs for the transaction. Uh, they may have a dollar amount uh, that can be used as a credit that will go towards updating something in the home. Maybe the seller is aware that their home is older and something's going to need to be done or replaced. So right away, right up front, to incentivize a buyer and take worry off the buyer's mind, they may say, we're going to give so much of a credit um, at the closing to fix or adjust this particular item. That also could be done in offering something like a home warranty, which we're seeing a lot of, especially when homes are older. If you have an older home that has older appliances and older furnace, the seller may offer to purchase a warranty, and the warranty usually covers those items for the first year, uh, thus taking some of the worry off the buyer, because buyers obviously have a lot of costs that are involved when they're purchasing a home, and they don't need to move in and all of a sudden have the stove or the refrigerator or the furnace uh, stop working on them. There's also another set of incentives that sellers can offer. And that is what I call the non-monetary incentive. That's when a seller may say, if you buy my home, 
I'm going to leave for you the lawnmower, or maybe the snow thrower, or they might have something that's unique to the house, like a storage shelving unit, or cabinetry in the garage, or a worker utility area. And they want to make the point that what makes my house different to the buyer is that if you purchase my home, this is going to come along with it. I've seen sellers put in the offering agreement, if, for instance, if they have a, an elaborately landscaped uh, lawn, they may s specifically mention that ornamental bushes or trees or, or special landscaping stays with the home, uh, that they have no intention to take it. It could be simple things, uh, like I said, of uh, lawnmowers, snow blowers. Uh, if the washer and dryer is not listed in the things that are conveyed in the sale, they may make a point that the washer and dryer are staying with the home. A lot of times you see that when it's an upscale washer or dryer. And I've even seen things like lawn furniture, deck furniture, or in some cases, uh, if you have someone that has a hot tub, they like to make the mention that if you purchase my house, we'll leave the hot tub behind. Let's take a break and look at a short presentation and I'll be back to talk about the second of the three most common incentives uh, when you're in real estate. talking about incentives on the real estate show and I just went over some of the incentive ideas or some of the things sellers might do to offer or entice a buyer to purchase their home rather than purchasing another home. There's something else that sellers will do and this is a, a common incentive but you have to be very careful with these incentives and my words to the sellers are a lot of times professional realtors if you offer this incentive it's really not going to attract them because the bottom line is a professional realtor their responsibility is to represent their client not chase a commission so uh, if they're doing their job they're finding the home that their client wishes to purchase and they're not doing it because of this particular incentive and this incentive is what they call the bonus the seller will say if my house gets sold, a realtor brings in a ready, willing, and able buyer, and my house gets sold by a certain time at this price, I will, on top of the commission, offer a bonus of XYZ amount of dollars. Uh, they do this because they think this is going to get realtors to show their home as opposed to showing other homes, and it's going to try and get realtors to convince the buyer to buy that home because the realtor is going to make a little extra money if they get it done within a certain period of time. That's kind of a false belief because as I just said, true professional realtors are not incentivized by bonuses. If it happens to be a home that a bonus is being offered on and a buyer comes along that the realtor is representing and the buyer makes the decision to buy that home, well that's great. But a lot of times I caution my sellers that a bonus is not really the incentive to get the house sold. You want to do the things you need to do to make the house attractive to the buyer, not to realtors. Let's sit back and watch a virtual tour of a home that's for sale. And this virtual tour is a little bit different. This virtual tour was not created by me. It's my first time on the real estate show showing a tour of a home that's for sale uh, by a virtual tour that was created outside of my company. Let's sit back and take a look.
estate professionals are in a unique position that most working professionals never face. They often share their contact information openly with others, meet unknown clients, and walk through vacant properties, to name a few. It's because of the unique nature of this business that it's critical for all real estate professionals to have a personal safety protocol in place that they follow every day, with every client, every time. And that includes with you. So, what kind of safety protocols might your real estate agent take? When meeting you for the first time, your agent might not meet you at the property right away without first having an initial meeting at the office, regardless of you or your agent's gender. You wouldn't want to meet a stranger at an unknown location, would you? Hey, how are you doing? Mm, no. During the initial meeting, your agent may make copies of your driver's license and pre-approval letter for their records. This precaution allows the agent to keep a record at the office of who his or her clients are and a calendar of appointments. When first meeting with your agent, you'll also discuss the types of real estate you're interested in and walk you through the process. Now your agent can arrange showings, meet you at properties, and schedule open houses to help you through the biggest financial decision of your life. When viewing a property, your agent may ask that you drive separately. Please don't be offended. This is a safety precaution for you as much as it is for your agent. Not to mention you may both have appointments to go to afterward. Hey, this is cute. When viewing a property, you may need to sign in with your name and phone number or show a photo ID. This is so the seller's agent knows who entered the house. If you were opening your home to strangers, you'd want to know who was there too. As you tour a property, your agent may walk behind you. This is not only a routine safety measure, it also allows you to see the room first and make your own impressions. And many agents won't go into attics, garages, or basements, but feel free to look around and let your agent know what you thought. If you want to see a property that's vacant, it's got potential. your agent may only show it during daylight hours. Vacant properties should be seen during the day when you can see what safety hazards may exist, like a loose floorboard or any defects the house may have, like mold. When showing your property or hosting an open house, before opening your home to potential buyers, your agent may ask you to board your pets and remove jewelry, family photos, credit card receipts, artwork, prescription drugs, and valued possessions from the home. This is just one way your agent is looking out for you to keep your property and belongings secure. Your agent may bring a colleague to host your open house. If there are several potential buyers walking through the home, even better to have two agents on hand to answer questions and keep an eye on things. Safety is an important part of real estate, and we appreciate you respecting the protocols and processes that have been put into place to keep you and your agent safe. We're talking here on the real estate show about incentives, and I talked about the two different types of seller incentives where a seller might offer monetary like paying closing costs and so on and so forth or non-monetary by throwing in stuff like lawn mowers and hot tubs and shelving units and so on and so forth. I talked about uh, the incentives that sellers may offer realtors by trying to entice them to get show their home by offering maybe a bonus based on some kind of time period or price. But the third kind of incentive I wanted to talk about is the reverse. The incentive that realtors may offer a seller or a buyer to do business with them. Now realtors, as you know, are independent contractors. They're business people. The agencies that they work for are businesses. And they survive by having clients and obviously getting real estate transactions done. So how can they attract a seller to place their home for sale with their agency or with that agent? How can they get a buyer decide to decide to do business with them? Well, they can offer incentives. And we've seen all kinds over the years. Some real estate agencies may say that if you list your home with us, we're going to do this, 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 and this and they'll list things that they may do that are different than what other agencies may offer. I've seen things like if your home is within a certain price range, we'll have a professional photographer come out and take professional pictures so that your pictures really stand out on the internet. Uh, we may provide for you professional staging advice 
uh, so that somebody comes out and goes through the home and gives you advice on what to do to change it up a little bit to make it more appealing to a wide range of, of buyers. Some real estate agencies may offer a dollar incentive. Uh, I've seen uh, incentives being offered where if you list your home or you buy a home with us, you automatically qualify for a certain dollar amount as a closing gift. Um, again, there are rules and regulations when it comes to monetary awards, so you have to be very careful about those things, but I've seen that stuff done. There's also uh, realtors out there that offer things that are a little bit unique. Um, as you know, I do the real estate show. If I list a home, I offer doing a virtual tour to put on the real estate show. It's one of, the, one of my incentives for sellers to do business with me. Um, and there's also companies out there that also do things like virtual tours, social media, and so on and so forth. So there's the incentives that the realtors or the real estate agencies will provide or offer in order to get people to do business with their particular agency. So in review, you're looking at mainly three types of incentives when you're talking to real estate. Incentives that a seller may offer to a buyer to entice them to make an offer on their home. An incentive that a seller may offer to a realtor to try and get the realtor to sell their home as opposed to other homes they may be showing. And then there's also a number of different incentives that the realtor may offer in order to get the seller or buyer to do business with them. Let's sit back and watch a short presentation and we'll be back with my final comments in the Real Estate Mailbag. This is the part of the show that I call the Real Estate Mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent here to the Real Estate Show uh, that are asked to me by fellow realtors or even asked to me when I'm out and about on the street. We're talking on this show about incentives, and I wanted to make an, a, com a comment about incentives. Incentives are something that are part of business. Uh, we see them in a number of different things. I mean, you can't go out shopping today without seeing some kind of an incentive. Most common incentive we see out there in the world is that thing that's called a sale. Uh, it's a discount that's offered. You know, come here, buy this item here because it's less than it is over there. 
There are other kinds of incentives that are offered. We see uh, incentives at car dealerships all the time. If you purchase this particular car, you get a year worth of car washes or you get a year worth of service or whatever. Incentives in real estate are very similar, but you have to be cautious about incentives when it comes to real estate and real estate transactions. My advice is to talk to your realtor. If you're looking at a home and there's an incentive that's being offered, talk to the realtor. Is that incentive really something that's worth what's being offered? Or is it just something that's very commonplace out there that you might be able to negotiate anyways uh, with the house you truly want to buy uh, in the offering that you're, you want to make? You want to be cautious that the incentive is really worth something that may help increase value of the home or increase value of the purchase. And it's not just what I call fluff. My name is Rick Naples, and this has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.